been? <coughs> Coach, just uh, back here in the back, how, how would you evaluate the running game uh, through two games? Run game through two games. Um, you know what? Uh, unique. The first week um, against Ball State, we got we got really something that we anticipated but didn't truly prepare for in terms of a, a, a total drop eight game. Um, and I thought we ran the ball pretty well. We got a bunch of guys in. I think we played five running backs in that game and um, ran it pretty well, minus the uh, the turnover on the fumble. Um, this last week, we knew exactly what kind of game it was going to be in terms of uh, what Pitt is defensively, how they're built. Um, you knew it was going to be tough sledding running the ball. Um, we also knew that the quarterback run game was going to be our best run game in terms of being able to actually had everybody up and, and forcibly run the ball. How they're built, how Pitt's built, um, and really, really sound, but they're going to force you to throw the football. So I, I think for what was presented, which is what we prepared for, I think we ran the ball okay. Again, we put a ball on the ground in short yardage. That's two weeks in a row. That's beyond disappointing and, and really in a lot of ways unacceptable. Um, if I lose sleep about anything, it's that. Uh, we, we can't win games putting the ball on the ground like that and, and got away with one there, uh, whether it was the football gods looking over us or – maybe we're just that good of people that, that it, it turned out in our favor. But you can't put the ball on the ground in tight games like that. So I, I don't know if you're asking for a letter grade, but I think it's a work in progress. And I think it's a huge point of emphasis for us. I think the old line's playing extremely well. Um, we, we got some backs we're confident with. And uh, we got to hang on to the football. And I think it'll just keep coming as, as the season goes here. Ryan and Rob. How would you assess Gerald Mincy's performance on Saturday, and would you say he's won that left tackle job? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think Mince did a really good job. Um, you know, uh, pleasant surprise a little bit probably, um, just because he, you didn't really know. You knew he was just learning through spring. He was learning through fall camp. Um, really good in the pass pro part. Um, he, he's naturally gifted. He's super athletic. He's really long. Um, and I think he's really learned better than than you could ever ask a, a first year guy to do so. Um, but really pleasantly surprised, um, and honestly needed it to happen uh, in terms of him or JJ, um, or both being able to to hold that down over there. So really, really proud of him. Uh, they're going to keep competing, just like like at every other spot. You know, like that's not a coach cliche answer either. How you practice is how you play. Those guys got to continue to practice their tails off, um, and and through two weeks, he's done a really good job. Coach at wideout, you really shrunk things down as far as the rotation on Saturday. Is that ongoing? Is that still open? Is that is there still opportunity for you know, seven seven guys to catch patch, passes this week like they did in the opener? Yeah, I think in the same in the same question. I think how guys practice uh, again, and this is not a coach coach answer. I guess I am a coach, so it's me answering. But it's it's you're going to play the guys at the current moment situationally that give you the best opportunity to win. That's our job. Um, that game was so unique in how we were. We knew we would get defended. You knew that you were going to have to go win the game on the outside. There wasn't going to be a whole lot in there in terms of running the football down to down. For eight years, Pitt has not been able – people have not been able to line up and run the football on them. Um, and so for us, and, and our best chance to win was going to be on the outside in a lot of ways. Um, and, you know, shoot, we didn't hit them all. And – and we left some out there. I think those guys that left them out there are severely disappointed with leaving them out there. I think they've also moved on and learned from it. Um, and we got a long season with, with some really good defenses here ahead of us. I absolutely hope that, that more guys can play. But at the end of the day, I, I don't think any of us are going to apologize for playing the, the situationally the guys that we thought were going to win us the football game. Vince and Patrick. Alex Cedric Tillman afterwards kind of joked, hey, when, with this touchdown in overtime, big-time players make big-time plays in big-time moments. Do you like that kind? Of, and he said he was joking, but do you like that kind of swagger and presence that seemingly your players have with the confidence and what you guys are doing offensively? Absolutely. 
Um, I, I think they should have a swagger and they should have, should have a confidence. You, you earn the right to be confident. Um, I think Cedric continues week to week to prepare like that and he has earned the right to be confident. There's a bunch of guys in that room that have earned the right to be confident. I, I don't necessarily want us to be arrogant about it, but there's a standard from the day we got here and to the day that we met back when the guys got back at the end of January. We got off the road February 8th, I think we met, and the standard here is to be the best offense in the country. And But we can say it or we can work like it, and there's a handful of guys that have worked like it. There's a bunch of guys that are learning to work like it. Us as coaches, that's our standard to ourselves and to the players and to this program and to this place that our standard is to be the best offense in the country. We fall short, we continue to work. We fall short, we continue to work. We have a great game, we continue to work. So for Cedric to say that, jokingly or not, shoot, I hope they believe that they're the best at their position in the entire country. We need them to believe that. Um, he's certainly really, really good, and, and you can make an argument that he is the best in the country. For us, for us, it's important that all of those guys continue to get better. And, um, and big-time players do make big-time plays in big-time games. And, and so he certainly did there. So did Hendon. So did the five guys that were blocking their tails off. And so was the guy right next to him. And, and – so did the running back that picked up the protection, and so did the coaches that helped prepare him. So, again, uh, I'm totally open to answering questions about that game. I, I think it was a really good testament to our guys just continuing to plug because it didn't start well, but it ended on the right side of it. So, for us, we did. We harped on it Sunday, Monday. We drilled home what was bad. We drilled home what was good. And we reiterated our, state, our standard as we do every week that we're going to work our tails off to be the best offense in the country. we got to take care of the football, and we got to be better in situational football. All things we were not good at, and it panned out at the end. So, again, credit the football gods or just the fact that we're just really good people. Patrick, <laughs> Alex, you talk about being disappointed and putting the ball on the ground with Jalen having one in each game. Do you attribute that to what he went through in camp, or is it just as simple as got to hold on to the football better? Yeah, I, I think it's it's the way we we practice and continue to reiterate it and continue to harp on it um, and pointing out when when there could potentially be ball security issues and continue to harp on it. Um, but I'm sure it probably didn't help that he was he was out most of fall camp. But I believe in Jalen. We believe in Jalen. He was running his tail off at that point. Um, again, it can't happen. It does happen. It's not acceptable. We got to continue to coach it. And Jalen is a great player, and Jalen will continue to be a great player as he grows and he understands the importance in those situations of putting two hands on it, securing it, squeezing the heck out of it. Hey, Coach, obviously you want to get in the red zone, you want to score touchdowns, but how important is it to have a confidence in, in a guy like Chase that can get you three points when you need it? Yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Um, that kid's played a ton of football. He's super confident. Um, big credit goes to him for hitting there at the end. Um, we've always had confidence in Chase. He, he made a ton of big-time kicks at the previous place he was at. He, he's phenomenal. His mindset's awesome. Um, from high school to, to playing at USC, he's, he's played in some big-time games. and I know our guys believe in him. He believes in himself. He's phenomenal. Time for two more West and I'm wondering what, you know, last season, I'm sure y'all never took it for granted, but you're able to start just about every game really fast and, and really well. And for a start to go the way that it did, you know, on the road against a good team, is there anything you, you say to your guys in that case or what's going through your head thinking like, oh, no, this is, this is unusual? Yeah, the only thing going through my head is the next drive. Um, and, and how do we get the next drive started? Uh, when we get a drive going and pick up the first first down, we're, in, we're generally in a good spot. That, those two drives, along with a handful in the third quarter, were all execution um, in, in terms of just not executing. It's, they weren't missed assignments. They weren't 
uh, guys running free and hitting the quarterback. It wasn't anything catastrophic. It was simply execution. And that, that comes down to practice on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the preparation going into that game on Saturday. And I, I know a year ago how it was. This is not a year ago. This is this year with a different group of guys. And, and it didn't start that way. But purely execution. And as you would guess, the first thing we looked at Saturday or uh, Monday morning when we met as a unit is the execution. Why not? And there's a, a myriad of different reasons, but that execution part, you, again, you earn the right to be confident, you earn the right to start fast by the way you prepare Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We did not do that. And again, credit to our players and, and really 100% our players to continue to wipe it off and just play the next play. And I'm sure Hendon or if you talk to the players after the game, they'll tell you that's all we ever talk about is play the next play, play the next play, play the next play. And give them a ton of credit. They played the next play over and over again because it was the same situation in the third quarter. We just ex could not execute to get it going. And... Um, Again, credit to, to them kids. They, they did a phenomenal job of just bouncing back. We as coaches can't overreact to it either, and we didn't. And those guys on the sideline did a great job. Really quickly, Brett. Yeah, Coach, back here in the back. How much were you handcuffed from a play calling standpoint because you didn't win early downs? And secondly, quickly, Brew McCory, what do you like out of him? How much do you see his role growing? Yeah, tough when you're in second and long that was the biggest thing you talk about going into the game is you don't want to be in second and long forcing yourself to be in third and long like those guys on third and long are dangerous uh that and it was that way a year ago you didn't want to be stuck in third and long so you were just trying to find a way to get into third and manageable when you couldn't get anything on first down once we got that going the third the fourth drive and really the, the fourth, fifth, and sixth drive where we scored touchdowns on all three, it was picked up the first first down and got going. So it was because you were trying to stay out of third down with a dead ball and then get all their pass rushers in, and then it becomes what you don't want it to become. Um, so uh, I guess, yes, you, you felt a little bit handcuffed in that regard, um, just – because you couldn't get it started. Again, credit to our kids for bouncing back and, and going on drive four, five, six and scoring and getting us back into the football game. Credit the defense for getting us the ball back on all three of those drives. Those guys played their absolute tails off. Uh, Brew McCoy, uh, you know, week one, got a little taste of it, felt like, man, oh man, with the ball in his hands, he's really powerful, really dynamic. Last week he showed he'd go track a ball and go get it. He's practiced that way. Uh, he's been uh, similar to Mincy. I think probably with more videotape evidence coming in, he's been a really, really pleasant surprise. But to his credit, he works like that. Like that kid is a complete 100% worker. It's all about how he comes in, his mindset, his attitude, his effort, he is a worker, and he pulls others with him. He's been an incredible addition for us. Um, I, I couldn't be more proud of him, and, and for him to really appreciate the opportunity to be here. He's one of the kids that's beyond grateful to be here, beyond grateful for this opportunity. He's having so much fun, and, man, we're lucky to have him here. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Walls.